final question, if I might let me wade you off just a moment into this murky world of defining what might violate the appearance standard right from wrong, uh, these standards that uh, Chief Counsel and all of us have been talking about and wrestling with for now over a year. Did you ever feel in your fundraising efforts in behalf of Senator Cranston and these various fundraising activities that one, that you were being a part of perpetuating a, an appearance of wrongdoing, or that two, he might appear to be acting wrongfully in some way? No, and, and quite the contrary, there in my um, eight years of doing fundraising, I have certainly had occasion to come into contact with individuals who have said, I can do a $30,000 fundraiser and and I need you to get me that HUD grant you know or that HUD, and, and those are just people that we just threw their numbers away um, what do you mean you threw their numbers away? that we threw the phone their phone numbers away oh, it I was see. just I mean we um, there there are a lot of people out there that that are not um, are not subtle about what it is they want and um, those just I mean there was no reason to have to deal with those people thank you very much I, the point I'm getting to here, just uh, as a, a point of inquiry, did you sit in uh, for meetings on fundraising efforts uh, for these different groups in any other senators or congressmen's offices? For the USA Votes efforts? Any of them. I had several meetings with other senators about the voter registration efforts. Uh, in their offices in which you discussed the, the fundraising uh, effort, right? In, in their office in which I discussed it with the senator. This uh, USA Votes was a partisan group, wasn't it? USA Votes was. And, um, and that's who paid my salary. And uh, Mr. Keating did contribute to that group. Is that correct? Uh, yes, uh -huh. yes. D and he knew it was a, a partisan group? Uh, I, I don't know. I think the letter that, that has been put into evidence that we sent to him certainly didn't emphasize the partisan nature of it. It talked about participation. Um, now, you were a former uh, Senate staff member. Uh, you worked for Senator Cranston? Correct. On his Senate staff from uh, 87, I'm sorry, 78 until uh, mid-1982. And just generally, what were your responsibilities, just very... I, um, I was a legislative secretary, special assistant, project assistant, and deputy press secretary. You mentioned that you had a desk in Senator Cranston's whip office that you sometimes use. Was this a, a desk that you had used when you were on his regular staff, or was this just a place they sort of said, when you're over here having meetings, this will this will be a place you can use? Or? Well, it, it wasn't a desk. I think if you've been in Senator Cranston's whip office, um, there is a circular table that sits at the window that faces west that looks right down the mall. And uh, I often sat at that table and worked. There's a phone next to that table. But if you had no official Senate duties and no uh, substantive expertise on legislative issues being worked on, then what, what did you do at that desk? Well, as I say, for if I had um, another meeting that I was going to be attending with Senator Cranston, I might um, sit and make phone calls at that desk. I might sit and go through um, papers. Um, Did those phone calls include fundraising efforts? Well, most of them, um, they might include fundraising efforts, but um, more likely they were of a scheduling kind of nature because it's a, you know, it's a very public setting. It wouldn't be a place that, that I would sit and make fundraising calls. Well, are you aware, um, or were you aware then, that there is a Senate rule against fundraising on Senate premises? Uh, I am not. I, I'm not aware. I, I don't, and I should say I don't know what you mean by that. It's not allowed on on Senate premises. Well, uh, fundraising with individuals or uh, fundraising on the telephone, that sort of thing, on Senate premises would would be getting pretty close to a violation of that rule, I would assume. Meaning that meeting with a contributor on Senate premises and talking to them about a donation 
is a violation of Senate rules? That, that would be news to me. Um, there have been some actions, some help with uh, individuals, uh, perhaps uh, with Mr. Keating, maybe some legislative help, and therefore you should hit him up for $250,000. Didn't that connection between those two, uh, putting it in writing, an action, and followed by a request for a contribution, didn't that make you feel uncomfortable? Well, first of all, I don't think it says that there was any action taking place. It's an article that says there's a new head of the bank board. Um, that's not an action on our part. I believe there's a memo, and I'd have to go through it that says in view of some of the things you've done now that we're back in the majority there are some things pending or some legislation that might need to be done um, and therefore now would be a good time to hit him up for two hundred fifty thousand dollars wasn't no, there a memo that those are not the same memo uh, senator i think you're confusing or combining two different memos there's a memo of january second nineteen eighty seven which makes reference to cases and legislation which special counsel discussed and then there is a memo of September 6, 1987, which refers to a solicitation for $250,000. And I think perhaps you're combining the substance of those two memos. I'm referring to Special Counsel Exhibit 155. Yes. Uh, as I say, this is um, this, this to is ta is a is me talking about a fundraising meeting that's been set up and an article that has appeared in the Wall Street Journal. It isn't any action that the office is, has been asked to take or has taken. Well, the inference there is that something has already happened. News that obviously would be good news for Mr. Keating. You should ask Keating for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I mean, there is a there's a connection there somehow or other. Well, the but that something doesn't have anything to do with us, with Senator Cranston. Why did you put at that point you should ask Keating for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars if it didn't have anything to do with you? As as I've I've gone through before. I, we had decided that we were going to ask him for $250,000 whenever I could schedule this meeting. This was the first date I could schedule it. It was scheduled. The, the decision of what we were going to ask for him had been originally made back in March. This was just reiterating that. And we had scheduled the appointment before the Wall Street Journal article had even come out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> 